Well, honey, how did you make dinner so quickly? Well, dear, it was easy with my brand new microwave oven. You lie! Anything is possible with the magic of my new microwave oven. All it takes is a single push of a button, and food comes out perfectly cooked. And this way I had a lot more time to do all the things you're too lazy to take care of, you piece of trash. Wow, this microwave oven is the bee's knees. That's right, Mr. and Mrs. Borrington. The new fabulous microwave oven certainly is the bee's knees. Just look at all these foods you can prepare in just a few minutes. Move over, stovetop. And you too, oven. Because the magic of the microwave oven has come to set everyone free. Yay! Nowadays, no one even says the oven that traditionally follows microwave, as the box has been so maligned due to misuse by restaurants and home cooks alike. But to shove the machine into the sole role of reheating is a crime, because like any tool, you just have to know how to use it. And where better to start the lesson than with how microwaves work? Believe it or not, a microwave does not operate on dragon scales, genie lamps, or any other form of magic. Your microwave is a box that contains a magnetron tube powered by electricity. The microwaves produced by this device cause polar molecules to vibrate and create friction. As any person who has rubbed their hands together on a cold night knows, friction creates heat. So what polar molecules are in your food? Primarily water, which is why microwaves are great for reheating, steaming things like vegetables, bringing things to a boil quickly, and quirky fun with marshmallows. But that also means it's bad at browning food, has issues cooking evenly, and will not set you free. Although, maybe these recipes will help with that last one. I don't know. Brunch food is one of my favorite things, especially since the star of the show is usually something exemplary. But in order to make a poached egg, you have to bring an entire pot of water up to a simmer and keep the temperature constant and use proper technique and blah, 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 blah. However, in a microwave, you can make a single poached egg in a snap or make a whole bunch in sequence and then serve them all at once. It may not make the most beautiful poached eggs, but once you get it going in your own machine, making a poached egg is as easy as a few button pushes. Add one and a half cups of water to a microwave-safe bowl and add a small amount of vinegar, about an eighth of a teaspoon. Crack in the egg, and then place the whole thing in the microwave. Cook for 45 seconds to a minute, and if you want to make a bunch of eggs in a row, just add a new egg into the water after you take out the old one, and remove about 15 seconds from the total cook time. Retrieve the egg with a slotted spoon or a spiator, and it can go on anything you want. An English muffin, or a salad, or in someone's shoe as a prank. Poached eggs are great fun! One of the few culinary comforts I could easily make in college was applesauce, as it involved only a microwave and something to mash it with, thus saving me a trip down two flights of stairs just to go to the kitchen. Apples are mostly water, 85% in fact, meaning they easily become tender inside a microwave. And this recipe is really adapt -apple, adaptable meaning you can use whatever apples you have on hand, whatever seasonings, and you can even choose the texture from blended until baby food to I only have a potato masher rustic. It's like one of those choose your own adventure books. Anyone else read those? Just me? Okay. Cube up three apples, skin on or off, depending on what you like, and add to them a fourth of a cup of some kind of juice or cider, a tablespoon of a sweetener, a tablespoon of butter, a fourth of a teaspoon of your favorite spice, and some pinches of your lesser spices, and finally a pinch of salt. Cover the whole thing in plastic wrap, leaving a little opening for steam to escape, and then place in the microwave. Cook until soft, checking every two minutes or so, and then blend with your torture device of choice until you get your desired texture. On the opposite end of the spectrum from sweet, soft applesauce are salty snacks. But what should I try to make in the microwave? Popcorn's too easy. You can't really bake crackers or pretzels. And don't get me started on how it makes nuts soggy. What about potato chips?
That just might work. To make some quick microwave potato chips, you start with, oddly enough, a potato. Slice an eighth of an inch thin on a mandolin. Though if you want, you can cut them thinner, or even make chips using a vegetable peeler. You're just going to have to cook them about 30 seconds less. Arrange the slices on a microwave-safe plate covered in parchment, making sure they're not touching. Also be aware that the chips in the middle may cook a bit faster. Brush each side with oil and sprinkle with salt, and microwave on high for 3 minutes, adding time as necessary until they are done, usually for a total of 5 minutes of cooking. Not many other vegetables work as well as the potato for this. Sweet potatoes can make a decent chip, and parsnip almost works if you don't use small discs like I did. Oops. Carrots, on the other hand, seem to stay limp for all time and do not make good chips. If you try this and find another vegetable that works, let me know. I'm legitimately curious. So the question remains, are they the same as a traditionally fried chip? No. They're a little bit crunchier rather than crisp, and tend to brown a bit unevenly. But they're easy to make, fast, come out warm and ready to go, and you don't have to heat up a gallon of oil just to make a nice snack. And I think ease of use and speed is really what microwave cooking's all about. Well, that and impressing your friends with your crazy microwaving skills. The microwave just isn't good at making baked goods. And I mean, it makes sense. They have the word baked right in their name. And yet people still try. The most successful attempts use things like chocolate or spices or other heavy flavors in order to cover up the fact that the microwave just can't brown food. But where's the fun in that? Instead, let's try something a little more challenging. Something classic, like a blueberry muffin. Three weeks later. Ugh. Okay, so after an extensive trial of microwave muffin recipes, including some of my own, I think I can safely say that a pattern's emerged. A lot of them end up very pale and tasting a bit of raw flour. And if you try to make just one muffin at a time, you end up with a product that's a bit eggy. Okay. I think I know how to fix this. I'll be right back. The dry ingredients consist of 3.2 ounces of flour, 1 teaspoon of baking powder, and a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. That's it. The liquidy legion contains 3.2 ounces of milk, 1 chicken egg, a fourth of a teaspoon of vanilla, and 1 ounce each of white sugar and brown sugar. Then add your cooled 2 ounces of browned butter. Wait, I didn't say how to do that yet, did I? Like the brown sugar, brown butter makes up for some of the unbrowned blandness. And don't worry, you can make it in the microwave too. Place the butter in the biggest bowl you have and cover with paper towels. Microwave for two and a half minutes, or until the butter is, surprisingly enough, brown. You may hear a lot of popping. That's normal. I promise. Be sure to give it time to cool before use. Add the wet ingredients to the dry, and stir only as much as necessary to mix in everything. Next, add 30 blueberries, tossed in a little bit of flour so they don't all sink and give you a blue bottom. Divide the batter evenly between two mugs. I like my muffins to come out of the mugs, so I spray them with non-stick cooking spray first. The last thing we need to do is hide that embarrassing bald spot that the muffin is going to have. And a streusel top should do just that. Throw together one and a half tablespoons of flour, two and a half of brown sugar, a pinch of salt, and a tablespoon of cold cubed butter. Break the fat into the rest of the ingredients until you have an army of little culinary cobblestones, and use them to give your muffin a nice toupee. Microwave for three minutes, and remember, don't leave one in the middle, that's usually the hot spot. Check for doneness with a toothpick or a probe thermometer, and cook in 30 second intervals if more is necessary. And ta-da! It's done, I guess. Not very impressive to look at, is it? Oh well. Still tastes pretty good, though. That's right, viewers. All these lovely dishes and more can be yours using the new space-age technology of the microwave. 
The waves may be small, but this device is certainly a big deal. Now you're cooking with the magic of micro- <clears throat> I mean, science of microwaves. That's better.